Well, hello and welcome to the at-home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leaf Exmoor, and I'm here to keep you up to date with everything Rocket League and Rocket League and Rocket League. That's right, we've got Rocket League. <laughs> On today's show, we got uh, we got a good one. We're going to be taking a look at the South American Spring Split major highlights. Of course, we got Chicago as the focus in Double Tap. And you know, right after that, we got some sick stuff from the community in the breakout. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got some big news here. I'm about to read from a script. So let's, let's maybe we can show them some fancy cars here because Psyonix is teaming up with NASCAR for a multi-year collaboration. From May 6th to 12th, the NASCAR Fan Pack will be available in the shop. The Fan Pack includes three NASCAR-themed cars. What do they got here? We got a Ford Mustang, a Chevrolet Camaro, and a Toyota Camry. Also included are nine team decals, player banners, Goodyear racing tires, and a NASCAR Rocket League decal for each of the cars. But if you don't want to shell out 2,000 credits for, for the pack, there is still a free NASCAR trail available for you guys to pick up. All right, we got that out of the way. Let's keep this show rolling. The RLCS Season X Spring Split Majors are officially halfway finished with the conclusion of the South American Major. Similar to its Oceanic predecessor, the results may not have been wholly surprising, but that doesn't mean the event wasn't loaded with excellent matches and some truly impressive Rocket League play. True Neutral was the team to watch going into the tournament. After all, their impressive record, finalist placements at the prior two majors and big wins at multiple regional events made it unlikely that any other South American team could stack up to them. Despite this pedigree, however, Tien was unable to achieve their characteristic clean sweep in the group stage, losing once to Rebel in a match that wasn't even particularly close. We're gonna get Astro Mick, take the shot, AJG can't beat it out, Smith, follow up shot, bump on the line, that closes it out, three seconds left, third goal on the board. Get the diamonds out, Astro Mick, Jess, bullying Ray's Bull, Rebel, bullying True Neutral, 3 0 in game four. 3-1 in the series. An incredible performance from Rebel all throughout the day, and they sit alone Ooh. at the top of the group. Rebel went on to achieve a 4-0 streak in their group, but they faced some stiff competition from their Group B counterparts. Newly formed Team Erased put on quite a show, trouncing Furia Esports, formerly Novus AV, winners of the Winter Major, in the process. The stage was set for an exciting playoff stage, with the four frontrunners all vying for top dog status. The defense has really gotten it done here for Erased throughout this series thus far. Look, gonna pass it forward. Sad has the beat on Tander. Look with a pass off the backboard, looking for PJ. Just a little bit ahead of that ball. Back pass, love to see it. Just recognizing what's going on, where they are in the play. Just take the ball away. Eat as much time off the clock as you can. And they close it out. Upset City here stacks in series number one for me for the day. I guess it's series two for you, but that was a great one to kick things off for me. Unsurprisingly, the top four seeds all won their first matches, advancing to the playoff stage where their toughest foes yet awaited. In upper bracket, Rebel and Furia faced off, and the two were evenly matched. So evenly matched, in fact, that literally half of the matches in the set went into extended overtimes. Rebel leveraged an early advantage, but Furia clawed their way back into relevance with two consecutive OT wins. Before Furia could attempt a reverse sweep, however, Rebel slammed the door shut on them, taking the final game 3-1 to secure the first spot in the finals. Them off against Snips makes us even more difficult. Then a great flick. Kyle's no. coming in. Kyle's got the double. Oh, what a what? save! It was a double commit, but it was fantastic! It was a stomach getting that save in the end, however, and that keeps a two-goal lead. An amazing shot came in so quickly afterwards, too, as the stomach continues the attack with Yanks. Can't quite touch it down. The final 10 seconds. This is looking like Rebel close it out, and that will be Furia knocked out of the semi-finals. Our first team advancing into the grand finals but this South American Spring Major will be Rebel. In lower bracket, it was True Neutral versus Erased. Erased broke into a sprint right out of the gate with a decisive 4-1 game, granting themselves momentum. While Tian managed to force a four and a half minute long overtime in the second game, Erased won that one as well, putting themselves in prime position to overtake their region's top team. True Neutral gained that distinction for a reason, however, and they were ready to show why. The next three games were back-to-back -back victories in their favor, turning things around in the blink of an eye. 
once they played at their speed, it was all but over. Games one and two, not going to yeah. matter. 10 seconds left, and this one's going to True Neutral. They'll play against Rebel in the finals. It's so fun to watch True Neutral hibernate on defense, wait it out, make every single backboard read they need to, regardless of how much time they spend in their own half. They are efficient with boost, their positioning, the communication certainly is on point. And thus, the Grand Finals came down to a Group A grudge match between True Neutral and Rebel. Things proceeded quite differently this time, though. Armed with knowledge and experience, True Neutral dismantled Rebel's defense to quickly put themselves at match point. Rebel tried fighting back, taking two games of their own, but it was too late. Tian's early advantage proved to be too strong, as they closed out the match before Rebel could tie things up. This is getting almost sentenced here, Chamaco, because there are only 10 seconds left, three goals to score. I think we got the winners defined here. We, we definitely do. There's nothing that Rebel can do. I mean, they did it a lot. They definitely did a lot. They, they played so well on that game number four, game number five. But in the end, uh, True Neutral was a little bit too much. Uh, a few mistakes uh, from Rebel, and True Neutral was able to capitalize. And we have the results right now. Two majors down, and the big boys still remain. Who will come out on top in the hyper-competitive regions of North America and Europe? Keep tuning in as the spring split continues its final phase. And now, ladies and gentlemen, joining us on the line is Abner Custodio Gonzalez, a.k.a. Chamaco. Welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, man, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. It's been a while since we've, well, not talked. We, we, we casted together over the weekend, but it's been a while since we've had you on the show here. So it's good to have you back. I want to talk to you about Season X. I want to talk to you about that last major. So let's start breaking things down here. I, you know, I want to I want to get your thoughts over the the course of this season, man. I'm trying to get these thoughts from everybody because it's been a long season. Season X has been out of this world. They're like, you know what? We've never had so much Rocket League. Let's have as much as possible. And it's been a lot for for casters, for uh, Psionix team, for the players. And now that we're we're nearing the end of it, all we have left is the championships for the South American region, region specifically. I'm curious your thoughts on just the length of the season, how many games were played. Do you think it was beneficial for, for the region, for the players, um, and and all the formats that we saw as well? So I just want, I want to get your overall thoughts. What, what did you think about Season X? It is weird uh, because we came from having two seasons every year, basically, uh, to having a one long uh, season in one year. And I think it was... A necessity so we, we we had to do it because of what you know things that are going uh, throughout the world so i i understand that part uh, is it better for for the players uh i think as long as there's competition it's good for them uh it doesn't it doesn't matter how much if it's a longer season or not in, in this case uh, south america is just uh, constantly growing and it, they just need to have something uh to strive for uh, but i don't i don't know how it affected the players how they are uh their emotions and you know like okay so we have to wait uh, a whole year for for the championship or, or what is going through their minds uh but they did get better uh, that, that's yeah. a, that's a fact <laughs> I, I think i think we can all agree on that so uh, they uh, the, the fact that it was a long season but it was divided in splits i think it helped and and the fact that we had, could change a little bit every mm -hmm. single split uh, the format that also helps a bit so even though it was a big a large uh, long season I should say um, it, it felt like multiple multiple seasons right um, yeah just just not with not with the same um, results in the end like the, the end goal was uh, going to the to, to the world championship that that, that was uh, the, the bad yeah. part but uh in the end it felt like uh, it, there were like three different tournaments and, and that helped a bit so long story uh yeah. long answer short uh it helped it wasn't it wasn't the best but i think it, it was uh it could have gone a lot wrong a, a lot more wrong and done some uh in some other way so i yeah. i am not mad a lot of teams were starting to focus on making sure the defensive end was strong as well how do you feel that's progressed for, for the region? Because we do know that a lot of these players are still trying to get better and they know there's space for improvement. Do you feel like uh, that's been the focus over the last split, again, is the defensive half? Or do you feel like it's something else? Yes, I think they have tried to improve in some other areas and not being at 
just mechanically gifted and we have seen that with with card i think with furia uh, which i i know he is a very mechanically gifted player he's very skilled but even though he still go for some crazy things uh, he's he's not going for that as much as he was mm -hmm. maybe two seasons ago uh where i thought that everything he was trying to go for was a flip reset uh, i don't think he's going for that a a anymore mm -hmm. every single time he, did, did they still do uh, overuse the double taps and you know the, the the backboard and stuff like that but um that's heavily ingrained in their dna yeah, or course. something <laughs> i don't know uh but but they're using it in a different way they're, they're setting up plays uh that way so Yes, they're trying to be more uh, team-based and, and not so uh, mechanically heavy. Yeah. Uh, although, although uh, there's there's something to, to be said about. I mean, when you see uh, some uh, some some players that are mechanically gifted in some other regions, they stand out a little bit. And, yeah. and we talk about how they open up uh, the the offense for for their teammates. So it, it is a balance that they need to to. Um, to reach, I, yeah. I should say. But I gotta say, thank you, Chamaco, for for joining me. It's been a pleasure, and I hope to see you again soon. Hey, man, the pleasure is mine, and hopefully, we can do this again. Lost to Renan, can't find him. Time expires. PJ, last chance. He's oh, is up in the air already. The shot is in. Oh, <laughs> Savages leads the future and ties the game. Look at PJ put this one in the perfect spot. He jumped before PJ's even jumped that ball off the wall. Again, just effortlessly swatting a shot clear of danger. And some Ooh. flip resets it on target. Ooh. And it's in, shot. My oh. goodness, you asked him to do everything, and he does it all. Zap is now trying on the follow-up here with PJ. Down the field, he's going to have one shot at this, but he can't find the ball in time. The ball is moving too quickly. Leafs drops this one into the box. What is and going on? For Zandis and PJ. What? He just can't miss. Okay, it just rolls in finally. Wait. What a challenge. I think this might be the slowest goal we've seen throughout this entire major. Everybody's oh. in the air. Everybody is flying. One last play left. Pod on top of this ball. Gets bounced straight down. And I don't think anyone's going to play it. Fossey might have it off the hood. Flicked over. Pod. Oh. Oh. To the top corner. And a race score zero. The same spot he denied a goal. He put it in. Good flick buys himself that backfield space. Now it comes out to Banger Boy. The attack's on for South Florida. No Shot way! With the redirect. It goes in, and South Florida up by two. Redirect of the century. My goodness, kid. Go up and grab it off of the back wall. What a pass from Banger Boy. However, sees Kayo Central. As Yangs gets control, all the boys got 40 boost and a man central goes up for one, oh. gets the air dribble. Oh. Oh. His teammate comes in to remove the other defender and Revel draw themselves even. How do you defend against this? You've had so much pressure. And then as soon as Yangs comes forward, he takes out one. You know what? Who needs coffee when you got hot shots? I'm kidding, I still, I still need my coffee. But I also need some sweet, sweet breakout. Let's get into it, guys. First up, Dry Dre cools us down with some cool snow day play. Now, I'd like to let you all know that my producer tried to trick me into saying that I was wrong in the past about Snow Day. I'm not wrong, but that was cool. I'll give you that. <laughs> Next up, oh, Valentine makes a play at the goal line.
I... I hurt inside. Oh, to be bronze again. <laughs> oh, that brings back memories. Of yesterday. Moving on, Chiquito47 says him and his friend have a signature move. I'm honestly just mostly confused about what the opponents were doing. Looked like my teammates on the other side of the field. Moving on, our next one comes from Wee Tobias. Who has quite the smooth play for your face? Mm, that does, you know what? That's juicy. That feels good when you get that perfect trap just to land right on your car and you take it away to the other side of the field. I hope he scored. I hope he scored otherwise. It still feels good. Still feels good. We got one more post for you guys and milk the best. Is playing with fire. <laughs> Definitely risky. I like the attempt. Barely works in your favor, but we take those, that's for sure. Anyways, we are done with the breakout. Coming up next, it's all about Chicago in Double Tap. We've already covered his G2 Esports teammates Rizzo and Apps, so let's round out the trio with G2's newest member, the young and talented Wiz Chicago. The way I got my name Chicago is because when I was younger, I was a huge Derrick Rose fan when he was having his MVP year with the Bulls. So that was the team I chose to support, and that was around the same time that I made my Twitch username. So I just took it after the Chicago Bulls. I just kind of stuck with that through Rocket League. Chicago's big break in the RLCS came thanks to his impressive performance in the season four Rocket League Rivals series. Playing for the team Fibian Esports, the then 16 year old player helped his squad score a first place win. Unfortunately, the team would release its talent less than a month later, before Chicago was even able to play in the championship series that he had worked so hard to break into. All was not lost, however, as the following season, he was picked up by Dignitas as part of the soon to be legendary team's very first roster. While this meant he would have to compete in the RLRS yet again, Chicago made the most of it, boasting the highest player rating of any competitor in the league and placing it high enough to earn a promotion to the RLCS one more time. False move, and they could have found themselves trailing with their rival series lives at stake. But Zol, he's gonna find Turtle. Here's Chicago, now he's done it. it! It's Chicago who strikes again for Dignitas. What a play, everyone getting involved from Dignitas here. Zol over to Turtle, Turtle over to Chicago. It's all the way down the field. Such a beautiful goal from Dignitas and they find the back of the net with less than 45 seconds. Between seasons five and six, Chicago would change teams yet again, this time joining Evil Geniuses just in time to qualify for the World Championships. As luck would have it, one of EG's first opponents of the tournament turned out to be none other than Dignitas themselves. Chicago used the opportunity to demonstrate his allegiance to his new squad by having teammate Classics rip up his old Dignitas jersey on stage prior to the match. Between seasons, Chicago would end up swapping teams once more, replacing Kronobi on G2 to form the now legendary lineup along with JNAPS and Rizzo. Season 7 was the closest Chicago's yet come to achieving his dream of bringing home the RLCS World Championship trophy. A solid third place finish in the regional game gave way to some immense momentum at the land that carried G2 all the way to Grand Finals. Five seconds left on the clock, and G2 will put another one away. A 6-1 scoreline here in game four. Definitely a little bit rough. Rogue this entire series have only had about two goals just to represent the utter dominance that G2 are inflicting and just their presence on the field right now is unstoppable. G2 are on fire and they will be headed to the Grand Finals. Well, 
Ali ended up falling just short thanks to her Herculean effort from Vitality. This brush with greatness was proof of Chicago's compatibility with his new teammates and staying power within the RLCS. He would later reiterate his worth by taking first place in the stacked Season 9 North American Regional, an achievement he considers on par with his second place finish at the Season 7 LAN. He missed the boost, he missed the boost. I got oh, you yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, it's 50 or something. I'm nice. behind you now, full. I'll be behind you, Jake, behind you. I'm up, four. Yeah. Waiting. He's up, One he's up. up. No! Nice! Nice! Let's go! Nice! Bad. I'm nice. kind of low. Follow. Nice. I'll try. I'll go. Nice. I'm Come behind you guys. Behind you, Jake. I got their boost. One dead. Go. Open, open, open. open. Nice. Nice. nice! Why was that so easy? Why were they yeah. trolling? Let's go with your first ever regional title, baby! Let's go! G2 and Chicago have remained competitive throughout Season X, despite the team's admitted aversion to online tournaments, remaining in the region's top five teams even in the face of NRG and Envy's ongoing battle for dominance. It's making it impossible. Got about half the game left to play. The neck and neck. Oh, Chicago! Oh. Him and JNAVs have been the tip of the spear, and they thrust through for another goal. Well, look at this, 50. Oh, disgusting. Just completely neutralizes that ball on the goal line. Chicago just has to come home and get a good solid touch on it. And just like that, G2 answer 15 seconds later. The opposition has never been stiffer, yet Chicago remains a force to be reckoned with, unbending like a mighty tree in a hurricane. You know, that's honestly thinking about it back to when he replaced Kronovi is a lot. Like there's a lot of pressure when you take out a legend like Kronovi and be like, move over, this is my roster now. And he stepped up to it though. There was a lot on the line there and the fact that Chicago is still around to this day is a real good proving point that he belongs at his position in the RLCS. Chicago is gonna be here for quite some time, but we're not, because that's all the time we have for today. You can check out, of course, more of our content on YouTube and on Twitter at Squad State. Thank you guys so much for watching. You know I always appreciate it. And for a little overtime action, here's your weekly backfire.